Hi, I'm Lee, welcome to MG Specs. And have you ever wanted Hydrocrasses as your commander? Well, Mum says we've got Hydrocrasses at home, and the Hydrocrasses we have at home is the Goose Mother. Now, the Goose Mother might scale like a Hydrocrasses throughout the game from tiny 3 3 gosling that gives us a little bit of draw or a little bit of life gain to who knows how big end game Goose Matriarch who packs a wallet that could take out one of our opponents. But it's the tokens that the Goose Mother creates that are the key to winning with this honestly horrifying honking hell beast. Let's take a gander at the Goose Mother. The Goose Mother is Simic and X for a legendary creature bird Hydra. A 2-2 two, two has flying. The Goose Mother enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. When the Goose Mother enters the battlefield, create half X food tokens rounded up. When the Goose Mother attacks, you may sacrifice a food if you do draw a card. If you watch me before, you'll know I don't like to tell you that this is the way you have to build something. So let me present to you six of my great ideas that migrate because that because geese migrate south for the it's fine. Um, some of my ideas that might inspire your own goose mother build. Food and Simic life gain. At best, this is a mono green deck supported by blue control and draw cards. Grab creatures like Wicked Wolf and Feasting Troll King who love a working lunch. Throw in some other life gain with Jardy Life Strider, etc. And then crash in with a human goose pumped army courtesy of the often overlooked Blossoming Bog Beast. Artifacts theme. Food tokens are an artifact permanent type and blue enjoys a productive relationship with artifacts. Whereas green isn't so keen, bar some recent unsettling green card synergies with artifacts like Teething Wormlet. In my day, artifacts gave green goosebumps. However, I digress. Blue loves to reduce costs with affinity for artifacts, see Thought Monitor, and to tap artifacts for value, see Merchant's Dockhand. Again, the other colour green isn't bringing a huge amount to the artifact theme, but supports with ramp. Methinks we need some of column A, food, and some of column B, artifacts. Plus one counters and Voltron. I've lumped these themes together as I think they are linked. The Goose Mother is a pretty versatile beast, providing value early as a three mana 3-3, three three, who also gives us follow-up draw or life gain, or a goose bump inducing beta later in the game when we've assembled big mana. Even a 7-7 seven, seven flyer puts players on a three turn commander damage clock, which also gives us tokens that interact with various other cards or draw from its attacks, trigger or life gain. Do I need to mention doubling season here? The card that doubles the counters and the tokens? Parallel lives anyone? Herald of Secret Streams for an unblocked commander, and this chap, Hierophant Bio Titan from 40k, a 12 12 Vigilance Reach Ward 2 Tyranid that is reduced in cost by removing plus one counters as a backup win con. Cast this and expect foul language from our opponents. X spells and Hydra Typal. Remembering that you calculate the cost of an X spell by choosing X Thirst, adding up the total, and then including the cost reduction, a Gargos Vicious Watcher helps plump up our goose. Crew Fix is out there banking our mana, and as the X spells in this theme are just a another slavering head attached to a plus one plus one theme, we have a veritable smorgasbord of redundancy options in Hydras like Hungry Hydra, Voracious Hydra and Benevolent Hydra, all keeping opponents busy until we drop a giant goose Hydra from the command zone. Mainly mono blue bounce ETB theme. Let me just rummage around in the jank stock room for the Goose Mother's mainly mono blue bounce deck. Casting, then bouncing the Goose Mother with cards like Baron, Talarian Archmage, and recasting the Goose Mother to build up artifacts, doubling the ETB with Virtue of Knowledge, and the many other ETB doublers we have, and using the accumulation of artifacts as a wink on, such as Nettle Sist attached to the Goose Mother for the Voltron Smackdown. Simic alternative wing cons. Am I leading us on a wild goose chase in thinking a commander who suggests doubling counters and putting loads of mana into X might be the best Simic alternate wing cons commander for Helix Pinnacle and Simic Ascendancy? Or to pull off mechanized production with all that lovely food lying around? I tried out various combinations of these ideas while gold fishing. This happened and I thought, yes, that's the one. I'd cast a second harvest after producing food with Tireless Provisioner and Fetch Lands, adding to it with Peregrine Took and doubling tokens of parallel lives. Inspiring Statuary was paying for X in the Goose Mother's casting cost, who arrived as a 23-23, creating even more food tokens that ended up being doubled and added to and continuing to fuel the Statuary. My deck embraces the food synergies of green and the artifact synergies of blue and the best of combat win cons from both colours. And it accrues value throughout the game whilst the steadily growing sound of geese honking fills the air before my opponents are pecked to death.
Our cupboards shall not be bare with these food generating cards. Lord of the Rings and Wilds of Eldraine have brought us a bounty of food based synergies. Peregrine took second breakfast keeps the treats coming and tireless provisioner lets us flip flop between treasures and food as needed. Many other cards bring a dish to our shared lunch with the tough cookie recruiting food to our edible army. Gilded Goose creating more tokens and fixing mana and welcome to Sweet Tooth putting plus one plus one counters equal to one plus the amount of food tokens we have on a target creature. Maybe like a giant goose we just cast that created lots of food. Honk, honk. So Ginger gets super big with all these food tokens being sacked for life and lets us scry. Killer Service will generally be creating us three food tokens on ETB and lets us convert them into four, four rhinos. And it wouldn't be a party without inviting the Feasting Troll King, who also ETBs on cast with three foods and will sleep off his food coma in the graveyard until we tempt him back with a big helping of after dinner mints. Three things have been recurrent in Commander lately with Shelob, Chard, Van Goyvian turning our opponent's creatures' deaths into food tokens that retain their static abilities, to Bernard, Ginger Sculptor, the unconventional chef who apparently sources all of his ingredients from Innistrad, very troubled man. Um, so I'm thinking five colour food deck when? Stay tuned. Alongside the usual green ramp, we have the delightful Eleanor who ETBs with food and turns sack food into land ramp. Yes, I've put Jahira in another deck. She's incredible and contributes to the big man of this deck creates. Krak Clan Ironworks, the compost bin of the Krak Clan, gives us all the X casting cost fodder we would need to summon a huge goose. Inspiring statuary is bonkers. Often we are using it to cast things that make more artifacts, allowing us to cast more things and make more artifacts. And we have Inga and Asika, Cryptolith Rite and Elvin chorus to let our creatures, which are often value or utility bodies, tap for mana to cast more things. In the Moving Things Forward camp we have a bargain card, Farsight Ritual, as we can sack a food to look eight cards deep and put two into our hand. Trail of Crumbs lets us fill to the top two cards of our library and Trading Post can turn food into draw. Alongside our usual tipples like Rhystic Study and Urza, Lord High Artificer, we have Shimmer Dragon trading two tapped artifacts for more draw. Learn from the past because you got to include your graveyard hate and Thought Monitor, which has affinity for artifacts, and we aren't short of a few of those. Little Spotlight on Thunderous debut, another bargain card, Sack of Food when we cast it, look at the top 20 cards of our library and put two of them onto the battlefield. In Twine 2 for now instead if you have it, but I enjoy the synergy of an artifact being sacrificed here that can trigger Sir Ginger or Eleanor Gardner. And I decided to put Simica Sendry in because if it is out when the Goose Mother enters in the late game and we are using our counter doublers, there is a good chance this could be an alternative win for us. If anything, it's a mana sink for adding plus one plus one counters to our creatures. Removal is pretty standard stuff. Let's spotlight Troublemaker Oof with that bargain keyword again to exile an artifact or enchantment. Not entirely linked to our theme, I just want to draw attention to two artifacts which are completely overlooked but completely amazing and should be played more. Both ask our opponents to keep checking their mana, even limiting how much they can cast in their turn because they have to keep one mana up at all times or lose their investment in creatures. This is removal and stacks at an activated ability cost of one. Even better in this deck, they are artifacts which can be tapped for mana with Inspiring Statuary or sacked to pay for a bargain cost and can return the Goose Mother to our hand for recasting. Speaking of bargains, this content is completely free, so why not hit subscribe and get me closer to 1,000 subscribers? Thank you. Also speaking of bargains, bargain. Diminish a Witch. She has an aura-based humility effect, turning our opponent's big beater into a minuscule 1-1. One, one. Finally, I'm not just including Mana Drain because I want to appear basic. Oh, look at energy spec suggesting an incredibly powerful counterspell. How original. I include because a counterspell that can fuel the X cost in your commander's casting cost is a scary include to boost a massive game-ending goose. Before we talk combat win cons, we have all the lovely token doublers you know and love, and an Essex Fractal Bloom, which is expensive and completely bonkers. When your goose mother comes in and you turn those ETB food tokens into multiple copies of another creature such as Blossoming Bog Beast. On its own, two sacks of a food token add six life and therefore plus six plus six and trample to your creatures or plus eight if Bog Beast attacks with them. Imagine that with several Bog Beasts and all that food laying around. Game over. Motivated Pony very easily gives an overrun effect to our assembled foodies if a food entered the battlefield that turn. And Knight of Sweets Revenge ETBs with a food Food gives food the Jahira effect and can be sacked for another over an effect equal to how much sustenance is available to our well-fed fighting force. Then we have a triple
triple helping of blue cards that animate our leftovers as chunky beaters to end the game. Fear the leftovers, people. To round off the meal, it wouldn't be an MTG Specs deck without a card that defies categorization. I'm talking about mechanized production. It is a card that at its base can enchant a food and give us another food every upkeep or we can copy one of our key artifacts like Crystal Shard or Erratic Portal, or at the very best, it will see eight food tokens during our upkeep and ring the dinner bell in our favor. If you've enjoyed this humble free content, a like and subscribe would mean the world to me. I definitely didn't just film this so I could wear my goose jumper, maybe. Coming up on the channel, MTG Spectacular Showdown, episode two. If you haven't seen episode one, it was our first multi-camera game. It took me three months to edit. Uh, and it was a huge amount of fun. We're doing it again soon. We're filming in October, but we've got a top-down game in between. And this one is Mardu Goodness. We've got Queen Marchessa versus Jihada Binder of Wheels versus the Simic loveliness of Knessos, Priest of Hassa, and Demir, Scarab God. And it is a controversial game that we still reference to this day because of the huge argument that broke out and... Uh, we reference it by using simply one word, boomerang. Tune in to find out all about that. I will not be releasing the audio. Maybe Patreon exclusive. We'll see. Uh, anyhow, thanks for watching. This has been MTG Specs, and I've been Lee.